If you want insight into how I keep up with everything happening in the news, stick around until the end of this video for an important offer from Ground News. I have talked about weirdos in the Republican Party for a long time, months and months and months, if not years and years and years. Uh, just a, a quick cursory glance searching the word weird in my title shows that there's dozens of, <laughs> of mentions. Who knows how many times I've put it in thumbnails. But I'm glad that it's finally catching on thanks to Tim Walz, the governor of Minnesota, and apparently a man on the short list to be vice president on this ticket with Kamala Harris. All good things. I, I stated earlier uh, last week or so that uh, uh, Mark Kelly, I was hoping, would be. And let me tell you, between Tim Walls and, and Mark Kelly, uh, I'd be happy either way with one of these gentlemen to be the vice presidential pick on the ticket. It would be fantastic. They both mark several ticks that uh, would make this ticket completely unassailable from criticism from the right. Not like we need to pay attention to what the right criticizes, but you know, those, those voters who kind of go along with the media cycle and what is commonly talked about, it, it would help with them. So it would be a big deal. But Tim Walls has, has, has really given new life, or given life altogether, to what I have been saying for years about the almost went non-PG, uh, with these weirdos in the Republican Party. And uh, I'm not going to play all of the clips that have led to this particular interview with Jake Tapper, where Jake Tapper's asking him about calling him weird and weirdos. Um, but just know it has caught on. If you're not online, if you're not terminally online, if you're not compulsively online, uh, if it's not a sickness with you like it is with me of being on Twitter and, and threads and, and just, you know, on social media... Uh, you might have missed it, but it took on a life of its own, like many things with this Harris campaign. Uh, and it's a great thing, but it's comments that he made about them being weird that have really, really uh, resonated with the American people. And, and the reason that it resonates is because it's true. They are weird people who have weird beliefs about things that are weird to even prize or give give credence to. So uh, here's here's Tim Walls talking to Jake Tapper, and then we're gonna kind of go down the rabbit hole and talk about it a little bit. The new talking point, weird, which seems to have been started, at least as far as I can tell, by Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, who is on Kamala Harris's short list to be her vice president. After he called Donald Trump and J.D. Vance weird, he seemed to set off something of a trend among national Democrats. Waltz, if you do not know, is a veteran and a gun owner and a former public school teacher with close ties to organized labor, and he joins us now. Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz. Uh, Governor, thanks so much uh, for, for joining us. Um, Mr. Trump and Mr. Vance were in your home state last night. Uh, Democratic-funded polling I saw earlier this month showed Minnesota, which has not gone for a Republican president since Nixon, within half a percentage point if Biden was the nominee. Now Harris is a nominee, and a new Fox poll shows Harris is leading Donald Trump in Minnesota by six points. Why do you think she's so much more competitive in Minnesota than Joe Biden was? Well, look, good morning, Jake. Thanks for having me. I, look, there's a burst of energy out here. Joe Biden, we've heard it, he delivered across the board on so many issues. But there's a new burst of energy. I was at a labor rally yesterday, and I've not seen anything like this for 15 years. And what you saw out in St. Cloud yesterday with Donald Trump and J.D. Vance is the same old nonsense, just uh, talking points and denigrating folks. And, and I think she's more, you know, boosted because she's bringing a positive vision. Look, we care about what happens to your kids. We care about the environment. We care about job creation. So it's just a whole new vibe to the campaign. And I think these guys, th there isn't going to be a pivot because they don't have any new plans. So this is what you're going to see. I think Minnesota always competitive, but we're certainly going to win. So you've gotten some attention this week for calling Trump and Vance and Republicans in general weird. Uh, and I, I think that you're the one that set this tone. Uh, and there's this shift. The Harris campaign seems to be following your lead, echoing this language. Why do you think weird is a more effective attack line against Trump than what Democrats have been done previously, which is argue that he's, he's a, an existential threat to democracy? 
Yeah, and it, it's an observation on this. And I, you know, being a school teacher, I see a lot of things. But my my point on this was is people kept talking about, look, Donald Trump is going to put women's lives at risk. That's 100 percent true. Donald Trump is potentially going to end constitutional liberties that we have and voting. I, I do believe all those things are a real possibility, but it gives him way too much power. Listen to the guy. He's talking about Hannibal Lecter and you know, shocking sharks and just whatever crazy thing pops into his mind. And I thought we just gave him way too much credit. And I think one of the things is, is when you just ratchet down some of the, uh, you, you know, the scariness or whatever, and just name it what it is, I, I got to tell you, Jake, my observation on this is, have you ever seen the guy laugh? That seems very weird to me that, uh, that an adult can go through six and a half years of being in the public eye. If he has laughed, it's at someone, not with someone. That, that is weird behavior. And I, I don't think you call it anything else. It, it is simply what we're observing. Now, of course, of course, uh, this has the right in a tizzy. The weirdos are now crying foul. I did a video uh, last week oh, for this weekend where Newt Gingrich says that the left is going to start the mean and nasty personal attacks. Criticizing what Democrats will do that he predicts while the guy who has a nickname for everybody, crooked Hillary and Sleepy Joe and all of these pejoratives that he uses to describe his political opponents, they're complaining, uh, it, yeah, make it make sense. So anyway, chief weirdo, or at least second place in the weirdo competition, Vivek Ramaswamy, he tweeted this, uh, this whole their weird argument from the Democrats is dumb and juvenile. Mm. Mr. High, Highfalutin is gonna defend Donald Trump yet say that it's dumb and juvenile to, for us to call them weird when they're weird. This is a presidential election, not a high school prom queen contest. It's also a ta tad ironic coming from the party that preaches diversity and inclusion. Win on policy if you can, but please cut the crap. And I retweeted it and said, breaking, weird guy acts weird about being called weird. So they're, they're losing it. They're not having a good time. Um, and I've seen some criticism. I even had this criticism early on until I kind of looked into other things that Tim Waltz has said, that this isn't just about their weirdness. There are real serious things at stake and at play here in this election, you know, namely the continuation of democracy in the United States, not slipping into a fascist existence in our country any more than we already are. And uh, I was worried, I was worried that it was going to, the narrative was gonna be, let's not talk about the actual seriousness of what is at stake here. Let's just focus in on them being weird. And that is not the case. That is not what Tim Waltz believes. Uh, listen to this and really listen here because he's talking about fascism in very commonsensical terms. That it, they are bullies. They want to change fundamentally and structurally our society, our culture, uh, the, the racial makeup of the United States. They want an ethnostate. They are identita uh, identitarians, identitarians. That these people, uh, the same people who are who are denigrating J.D. Vance because he married a woman who's not white, are also at the reins of the Republican Party. Donald Trump gives these people oxygen and space. So here is Waltz also communicating, yeah, they're weird, but there's also something important at stake. These guys are just weird. That's who they are. So it, ain't, it isn't much else. Don't give them the power. Look, are they a threat to democracy? Yes. Are they going to take our rights away? Yes. Are they going to put people's lives in danger? Yes. Are they going to endanger the planet by not dealing with climate change? Yes. We're going to do all that. But don't lift these guys up like they're sometimes the heroes. Everybody in this room knows, I know it as a teacher, a bully has no self-confidence. A bully has no strength. They have nothing. The fascists depend on fear. The fascists depend on us going back. But we're not afraid of weird people. We, we're a little bit creeped out, but we're not afraid. But look, and then as you heard this, and one day ago, a poll came out and showed 
Kamala Harris up 10 points and Donald Trump getting his ass handed to him. Oh. So, sorry. But he's here today in the state of hockey to complete his trifecta. He lost in 16, he lost in 20, he loses in 24. A couple of things here. One, it's nice to have someone who can look casual and not have it look like campaign strategy. That he's not, it's not been focus group to, oh, will it good, look good? How's he gonna come across in a camouflage hat and a, and a, and a ring neck t-shirt? He looks like the everyman. Let's, let's organize this and strategize this and have this be uh, a narrative. When it, it's just who he is. He's a regular guy. That's refreshing to me. Secondly, and most importantly, is the fact that he is correct on every single point. They're weird. And yeah, we need to continue to talk about it because I believe that resonates with your average voter, your regular people. Um, but you're communicating something that they, it just, it, it hits a chord with them. They see Donald Trump. They see Sebastian Gorka, which is another person Tim Waltz has talked about being central casting as a Bond villain, I think is what he said. And that reaches people because it makes sense to them. Maybe it's putting into words the thing they haven't been able to really talk about. Donald Trump yammering about sharks and batteries and Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter and whatever else. The windmills and causing cancer and all of the insanity, shining light in your ass to, to, to cure COVID. It resonates when you just boil it down that they are weird, weird people. And they have a weird worldview that they want to impose upon you. Anyway, uh, I am pleased, very pleased that Tim Walz is now on a national stage more than he was. He's a fantastic governor who has put into place some wonderful progressive policies that protect the, the American worker, the American middle class, children, the things that Republicans talk about but never do anything about. Anyway, I'm thankful for that. I'd love to know what you think. You can call, leave me a voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to support this work, help me make these videos, click the join button, become a channel member. Go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. Follow me on social media. Make sure you're subscribed. I am nearly at 700,000 subs. That would be fantastic. I would appreciate that a lot. And also stick around. We're here in the video offer from today's sponsor. I recently posted a video about Judge Cannon dismissing Trump's classified documents case. Look, it's easy to feel helpless being faced with discordant news and headlines like this. I know the feeling, <laughs> trust me, I know the feeling. But look, we're not in a position in our country or indeed our world where a single one of us can tune out. We need to stay in this political fight. And the best way to do that is to stay informed. One incredible tool I use is Ground News, a completely apolitical and independent app and website that gathers related articles from across the political spectrum. Ground News allows readers to compare coverage to see who is spinning what narrative to their own end. Knowledge is power, right? It's not just a saying. So you had better empower the information you're getting with Ground News. Scan the QR code below or go to ground.news slash dollamore right now to score 40% off their Vantage plan, which allows you unlimited access. Ground News gives you a summary of each news story showing where the left, center, and right have focused their reporting, along with a visual representation of each news outlet's political bias, their funding, and thus their credibility. You can then compare coverage with full insight on any bias twisting the story, but you can take it even deeper with their blind spot feed, Ground News sheds light on important news that's receiving insufficient coverage from both the left and the right, which is something I try to do on this very show. 
You cannot change something if you're not aware of it. Empower the information you are getting by heading to ground.news slash dollamore or just scan my QR code below to save 40% off the exact same unlimited access vantage plan that I use for this show. By signing up, you'll be supporting not one, but two independent platforms working to make media more transparent. Ground News and the Dollamore Daily. Empower your knowledge with ground news.